piece on there. Um, it is a relatively minor one. Um, I have never researched Israel in any, in any detail. Um, but it, is, it, it, is a, it does provide offshore financial services, but it's not one of the great big ones. It's, it's probably somewhere down, you know, out of 60, it's probably sort of number 20 or 30 or something like that. Well, I, I, I think um, the trouble with local, very local initiatives is that this is an international problem, and this is a problem that absolutely, you know, international, being international is kind of inherent to the problem. Um, I think it can help in some cases to mobilise ideas, but this is something at the end of the day, it is ultimately states that are going to have to really take the actions that are going to, nation states are going to have to take the actions to fix this. And there is a certain amount that nation states can do on their own, but it is much more effective when there's international coordination. So, there's a, there's a group of public awareness, uh, as you said at the start, at UK and Kurt and other organisations. Um, are, are you noticing any effects, any sort of effects of, of the, these organisations as yet with people like Philip Green or making statements or how, how are things developing? I think the way I see it, um, UK and Kurt um, is a fantastic organisation. It's still quite small and it's what, what's particularly impressive about them is they're making a very kind of sophisticated argument. They're boiling it down into incredibly simple messages, but this issue of tax avoidance is is a very tricky, slippery concept of you know getting around the spirit of law, what's legal, what's not. And a lot of people say, oh, if it's legal, then just allow it. But but I you know I think they're doing a, 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 an amazing job. How have they affected what's going on? You know, I, I don't think that they have, it's not, they certainly haven't sort of stopped any juggernaut of what's going on, but I think they have really contributed towards changing this, you know, all this cultural change. I'm just beginning to sort of sense that there's kind of whips of, of change, you know, the lack of, you know, whereas previously there was just incredible acceptability, just acceptance of this stuff, just, you know, that same Telegraph article, you know, was pointing to Richard Branson saying, you know, this, uh, his decision to move part of his business to Switzerland was uh, has been widely described in the press as a blow to the Chancellor. Mm. But in earlier days, this used to be a blow. This would have been a blow to Richard Branson and to his credibility. And I think that shift is now beginning. I think that's where UK and Cut's biggest uh, impact has been so far. And I think that's and I think that's an incredibly important impact. I think we won't get any change until there is real sort of cultural. Chain. And stuff like putting a balloon up at Glastonbury, I don't know if you read about that, where mm -hmm. they, uh, Bono you was headlining, yeah, yeah, yeah. was yeah. headlining, yeah, and he you pay, pay your tax too. You pay your tax, tax too, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that sort of stuff I think is, you know, it's a sort of small protest, but it, it has a huge, you know, there's a lot of discussion about it in the media, so I think it's, you know, I think UK and Cut's doing fantastic uh, work. I just wanted to ask you, is there any international discussion going on among, say, G20 or anything about trying to work together to eradicate taxation? Well, uh, th that is, you get a lot of statements from uh, national leaders saying we're going to do something about this. They were, you know, before Gordon Brown came to power, you know, but back in whenever it was, 97 or something, he was saying we've got to, we're going to crack down, we're no longer allowed all this tax haven business and then when he gets into power everything changes and that's partly kind of the city whispering in his ear but there are there have been lots of periodic statements by leaders um, not that many but quite a few saying we're going to do something about it but we've seen lots of G20 and other summits come and go and you sometimes get statements like that one the era of banking secrecy is over um, even getting a statement out of them is sometimes like drawing blood. You, you know, I'm, I'm in contact with uh, various people who lobby in the, you know, at these kind of forums to get certain language in, and, and sometimes you see early drafts of text, and then you see the final outcome, and you see a lot of this tax haven stuff kind of disappears, or gets modified, you know, a little tweak here, a little tweak there to kind of dissolve it. So there is. <coughs> A huge amount of lobbying behind the scenes, and, and you know, you will find in in Europe and in other forums, it, it is quite often the UK, Luxembourg, Switzerland uh, that are very 
influential in just very subtly changing the language, removing, removing sentences here and there. Um, so it's a, there's a long way to go. And as I said, I think you know, widespread mobilisation, public mobilisation on this, and understanding, just understanding how important this is, is, is a sort of prerequisite for getting politicians to actually sit up and say they're going to do something. I mean, people like Vince Cable have made proposals which I think are very, very sensible, very useful. Um, but you know, he's not in the strongest of positions, I don't think. <laughs>